All right, so by way of introduction, I'm Ian Douglas. I'm a senior developer advocate here at Postman. I've been with the company about a year. Um, I've been in the tech industry for quite a long time, uh, doing a lot of software development, a lot of architecture, scalability, stuff like that. I've also been a software teacher for a number of years uh, where I taught API design using Postman. Uh, I'm a big fan of testing, big fan of team communication and collaboration, productivity hacks and, and tools and things like that. And on the side, you'll usually see me on Twitch uh, you know, doing some live streaming or tinkering with some 3D printing or electronics or something like that. And with me today, I've got Matt Ball. Uh, so Matt, why don't you give us an introduction to you? Yeah, thanks, Ian. So I'm Matt. Um, I'm a solutions architect here at Postman. Um, I've been with Postman about four years. Uh, I work within the, the customer facing side of the business. Um, I really love both uh, like technical aspects and getting to talk to people day in, day out. Um, on the side, um, I'm learning to, to fly, and also I really love uh, cars, so you'll often find me at a, at a track doing laps. That's awesome. That's great. <clears throat> All right, so we're going uh, to open up a, a Zoom poll just to get to know everybody's experience uh, levels here a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and launch that. While you're answering that, I'm going to go through just a couple of slides and explain what these questions are about. Um, and so the topics that we're going to go into today are going to be around things like governance and roles and, and audit logs and some of the more intermediate uses of Postman. Um, and so we want to get an idea of what kind of experience you have with API design and standardization like governance. If you haven't even heard the term governance, you can just say no experience on that one. Uh, the second question that we've got, get back, there we go, is uh, how much experience you have building out APIs and, and so on with teams at work? So not just using Postman alone, but like how much experience do you have using this as a team? And then the last one is how much experience overall do you have with Postman? Uh, are you fairly new to Postman? Have you been around for a minute? So we'll give everyone a few moments to fill out that Zoom poll. If you could uh, respond on that, please. And then we'll go and we'll, we'll recap some of, uh, some of that information. Oh, looks like everybody answered. So we'll, uh, we'll go take a look at some of this. Looks like, um, so there's a handful of you that don't have experience with things like standardization and governance and, and so on. So we'll dive in on some of that material today for sure. Um, building apps with teams, got about 33% with a year or less of experience building out uh, things with teams. And then as far as Postman experience, we got about 17% who are fairly new to Postman, 17% uh, six months to a year, about 30% one year to three years, and about 40% of you have been using Postman for quite a while, uh, years or more. So thank you for filling that out. That also helps educate us a little bit on experience levels and so on as we make these intergalactic sessions. So. All right. For the agenda today, this is what we're going to go through, and we're going to cover the governance rules in Postman using Spectral and what governance is all about. And I'm going to touch base uh, very briefly on the API security side of this as well, since that also uses Spectral. From there, Matt's going to go in and explain a little bit about the Postman private API network. Um, if you've been using Postman for a while, you're probably familiar with our public API network. Um, and then we're going to talk about the role-based access for teams and the granularity of giving people access to things that you're building inside of Postman. And then Matt's going to wrap up uh, and talk about the audit logs inside of Postman. And then we'll share out some resources and, uh, and go over any remaining questions at the end of the session as well. So again, as a reminder, if you do have questions, um, please use the Q&A section in Zoom. There'll be a little control for that at the bottom of Zoom that you can use to post your questions. Our moderators will answer some of them as, as, as we go through the session today. If you find that your answer or your question isn't being answered, it may be that we're reserving it for the Q&A session at the end. Um, and so we will try to answer all of the questions today. <clears throat> all right. Matt, do you want to go over the, the learning goals and uh, just go into a little bit more information here? Yeah, definitely. So, um, you know, today really by, by the end of the session, um, we're, we're hoping that you'll be able to come away really understanding how to uh, go into Postman and how to build out governance rules that you can apply to your API definitions, what that looks like in, in Spectral. Some of you might have heard of Spectral before, so a rules engine that we can, can use against our API definitions. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about 
um, the private API network. Um, so by the end of the session, uh, hopefully you'll have a good understanding of how you can go in and access that network, um, what it means to add things to that network and the different ways that that can happen and how you can stay organized within the network. Um, I'll pass it back over to, to Ian and he's going to help you understand um, what role-based access looks like within Postman. So the different kinds of roles that you can assign to users and permissioning. Um, by the end of the session, you should have a good idea what role you should apply to who and, and what kind of impact that's going to have. Um, and then finally, I'll be talking about audit logs. Um, so again, when you leave today, really the, the goal here is that you understand what kind of information you can find in the audit logs and what you might be able to do with them. All right. Super. Well, let's talk about governance. Um, so the definition of governance, governance is going to vary from company to company. Um, but at a really high level, it's about planning and communication. I think of governance, you know, it should really define a set of rules about the interface of your API for consistency purposes. And this planning stage is part of what we call the API first approach to what your organization is building. This level of consistency is going to allow for easier development of your APIs, better communication of expectations of the team, expectations of what your users will come to expect from your organization and assist with other parts of the collaborative efforts that we're gonna be discussing uh, through today. Um, so a couple of notes here on the slide. Um, we do provide uh, some amount of this on free plans, including the OWASP security scanning. But when, uh, when we dive in on the governance portion of this, um, please know that it's gonna be an enterprise only option. Um, and so if you're not on an enterprise plan, you won't be able to customize these governance rules. But we wanted to, as a company, as Postman, we wanted to make sure that everybody had access to some free scanning tools. And so as we go through, I'll show you briefly what the OWASP scanning tools are all about and uh, how to access those. All right, so I'm going to go over to my Postman environment here, and uh, we're going to show a little bit about, um, about how to access some of this. So most of what we're going to access today, if, if you are logged into Postman, you can click on the home button, the very top in the menu. And most of what we're gonna be accessing today is gonna to be in this panel here on the left, where we can see things like the private API network, API governance, API security, and so on. Uh, this is mostly where we're gonna be hanging out today. So I'm gonna be talking really briefly now about the governance and the security side of things. Now I'm gonna go into the customization here in just a moment, but uh, to get started, I'm gonna show you um, how this actually works inside of um, inside of Postman. So as I'm going through here and building out an API, I've got a very sort of simplistic open API specification here. And I'm going to get the moderation team to drop a link to where you can go get this. This is a, uh, it's on a GitHub repo and I'll get the moderators to drop this in chat for everyone. And again, all these links will be in the YouTube description, uh, afterwards as well. And, uh, um, the GitHub link for this is, uh, is from a live stream that I did with Arno, who's our API handyman. And I, all I've done is I've pasted this in here. I started an API from scratch and I just pasted this in here. But one of the things that you'll notice in the interface down at the very bottom, it's looking for violations as, as you type things and as you save things. And if I expand this panel here, we actually see a number of things uh, that got flagged. We see a few security concerns and we also see some governance problems here as well. I'm just gonna minimize this left menu here for a moment. So we can see, for example, that I don't have a security field uh, defined. Um, and then also from a security point of view, some operations don't enforce a security scheme and it's telling you exactly where it's finding this within your open API specification file. Um, and also if you're using Swagger, that will be uh, uh, something that it's going to screen for as well. Um, but we do recommend using the open API spec version two or version three. Um, and so we can see some of these things are, are going to be problematic for us here. So, um, so what I can, what I can do is, uh, the moderators, uh, have also shared, uh, uh, actually, if you can also share the uh, the first link as well, um, it's going to be an overview of how to use API governance inside of Postman. Um, all right, so what we can do here 
inside of Postman, you'll see uh, when we have these violations, there's also a link that goes over to a possible fix. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on this link here. And it's going to take you over to a documentation page where it explains a little bit more about what that violation is and maybe give you some ideas about how you can fix that within your specification file. So in this case, I just need to grab this security portion here. And it's kind of giving you an idea. Uh, like within your open API spec, you have your info section, you have a path section. And in my case, I had not yet defined the security section. So I'm just going to grab this a little bit for now. And I'm going to add this into my open API specification. And I'm just going to add it down here at the very, very bottom. And it's a root level tag. Um, and security is a list. And notice as soon as I add that in there, several of these problems went away. And so this is how by setting up governance rules and security rules inside of Postman, as your team goes in and actively designs out their open API specification, they'll be able to see how well they're adhering to your governance guidelines. Um, and so let's go take a look at some of the governance ones here as well. Again, there are possible fixes. Now, this isn't going to be pulling out from your code. This is just giving an example here explaining what the governance is all about, some possible fixes. It'll sort of show you where you might need to make some changes inside of your open API spec, but this is not gonna be like a customized code window, like here's exactly how to go fix what you're doing. There's gonna have to be some level of understanding of building out that open API spec in order to resolve these. All right, so let's go take a look at how those security violations got tracked in the first place. Um, so I'm going to go back. Oops, I'm going to go back to the home link. So in the very top menu, we see the home link. I'm going to go back to here, and let's start with the API security, and then we'll dive in a little bit more on governance. So with the API security, again, uh, we did mention that the uh, we do make the OWASP uh, security scanning free for all accounts. So whether you're on a free plan or any of our paid plans, you'll have access to the API security uh, side of things. Um, and what you'll see here is we have a number of things uh, in our organization where you can go in and you can expand these and you can toggle out uh, on or off which of these features you want uh, to be able to scan for. So within your team, if you're on a free plan or a basic plan, you may have a smaller team, um, you can go in and you can toggle these, and then anyone building out your open API specification will have access to uh, to the the violations panel at the bottom of the API builder in order to see these things. And so what we've done as an organization as Postman is we've gone and we've looked at the o, the OWASP uh, top ten for API security, and we've basically added our own spectral rules into this. And I'm going to touch on spectral here in a moment. Um, but what we've done is we've added those as spectral rules uh, to allow everybody to have access to that. Now, if I really wanted, I could go in, I could create a brand new rule um, and define all of that. But I'm going to do that more on the governance side here in just a moment. But I wanted to show a little bit about that. There are also links on here where you can go learn more about the API security side of things. All right, so let's go in and we're going to look at governance. So just like with the OWASP rules, we have some built-in rules here to get you started. So again, from that home panel, I'm going to find the link here that says API governance. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that link. And again, you can see that we've already got some things predefined in here. As an organization, you can expand these out and see where they are. You can toggle them on or off. I'm not actually going to do that because this is a production system right now. So I'm not going to, uh, not going to make any changes here. Um, but as an admin, I have the ability to come in here and actually create a brand new rule. We also have a full library of things that you can also pull in here as well. And, and this is just kind of to get you started on, um, on some governance. So for example, you know, give us some information about your API. You should have a contact email. You should have a contact name. You should have a URL for your contact info. And these are gonna be set as error conditions. If you don't have that, we consider that to be an error of governance. And so you can come in and you can toggle these things and you can import these from the Postman library of these governance rules. You can import these in for your own organization to use. Likewise, for the API operations, um, all the operations like your gets and your posts, they all need to have descriptions. The parameters need to have descriptions. These are maybe set as just warnings. They're really nice to have. And so we can set that as a warning level. 
And then for the API model itself, any reusable schema should have a description and so on. So these are things that we make available in a library. You can import those if you like, or you can just flag them all and say import all. Well, let's talk about the custom rules here as well. So because I have admin access on this team, I have the ability to come in here and create a new rule. So I'm gonna click on that button and we see just a really simple interface here where we can create a new governance rule. Um, so let's take a look at how we can build this out. So um, Matt already mentioned earlier what Spectral is. So Spectral is, is kind of a, it's a, it's a rule-based kind of markdown language. You can write it in YAML or in JSON. You'll have the ability to toggle uh, which of these. Um, and it's basically, um, um, sorry, I lost my place in my notes here. Um, so Spectral is basically just a way to, uh, to sort of define uh, a list of rules. So let's, um, let's go take a look at an example here. So I'm going to do this one in YAML right now. I'm just going to copy this in here for now, just for the sake of brevity. I'm going to keep this in YAML format, and we're going to paste this in here. So what this custom rule is basically saying is that I want to make sure that any API that I actually make, that the title of that API actually contains the word API. Um, it seems like a kind of a simplistic, you know, or overly simplistic kind of thing to do. Um, and every organization is going to be a little bit different as far as how they want to build things out. Um, but one thing that uh, that's worth noting here is normally within Spectral, this format section is optional, but in Postman, we make this required. The other thing to make note of, if you read up on Spectral and what Spectral is, there's a link here to the Spectral uh, uh, documentation on this page as well that you can go visit um, is we do not implement the entirety of the spectral rule set. Um, we, we only use a, a specific, specific subset of the spectral markdown language. Um, and so um, be sure that as you're looking at the, at the, you know, the proper main spectral documentation that you're also looking at the Postman documentation for which of those spectral uh, markdown Bits that we actually support. So in this case, we're saying for all formats of the Open API specification version three, Open API specification version two, um, that inside of the information block, inside of the title, you can set a pattern here and you can look for a regex of some kind. In this case, it's looking for that pattern to not match the word API. And we're gonna set this as a warning level. So any new API that gets built or any API that already exists within my workspace, it's gonna make sure that it actually contains the word API. If I were to click on the create button, it would go in and it would add this as a custom rule. I'm actually not gonna add this to our production system right now. So I'm gonna cancel out of this. But what we would see, if you add custom rules, you would see another section similar to what we see as API information, API operations. We would actually see a new section here called custom rules. And all of those custom rules that you build in here, then you have the ability to go in and toggle on or off. And it will show you whether it was a warning level or an, or a, uh, an error condition based on what it was you were, uh, you were trying to build out. Um, just to show a quick example of what the JSON format looks like, uh, the JSON format is also a little bit verbose. Let me copy this in here. Um, and so this is basically saying we want to make sure that uh, the title does not contain the word like rest public or the word developer, um, for example. And so again, this is just looking for uh, the function. We have the format section. In this case, it would only be looking at the uh, Open API specification version three. Um, and then the function that we're looking for is that we're going to go into a pattern. And again, this is just a regular expression that's written in here. So the JSON format is very similar to the YAML. You just, you've got to follow uh, proper JSON uh, formatting as you're writing these things out. In this case, we might consider that an error condition, um, you know, whether this thing is recommended to happen or not. Okay, so that's governance there. Um, so like I said, I'm not gonna save any of those custom rules right now, but your organization is gonna have a lot of flexibility in what you can require your teams to actually go through and build and set up. Um, and, uh, and again, you know, it's, it's worth noting that we don't support all of the spectral linting language 
uh, we just did that subset. So before we move on to the next section, I'm also going to mention that with our version 10 launch last year, uh, we also released a new command line tool called Postman CLI, which will allow you to automate these governance and security linting checks as part of your CI CD platforms. Um, and I've got a link in the notes as well if the, if the moderators can drop that. Um, so you can actually read up on how to implement that in your CI CD pipelines. The, the Postman CLI is built and maintained by Postman. It adds new features and functionality that's not built into our community open source project called Newman that you may be familiar with. Um, but the Postman CLI will basically have flags on there that you can say, go do my collection runner, but also go run my governance rules and go rescan all of that. So if somebody is building out some, some things and they're not paying attention to that violations panel, then you can actually run the governance rules and the API security scanning as part of the Postman CLI. And it'll actually, you can then halt your CI CD production or, or pipeline um, if any violations are found there. All right, so let's recap what we went over here. We, we talked a little bit about what governance is, how it's kind of a planning you know, methodology and how it really helps with team communication and so on. The OWASP security scanning is free, but the actual governance rules that I showed, uh, those are part of our enterprise only offering. And uh, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over to Matt and uh, Matt's gonna go in and talk a little bit about our private API network. Perfect, okay. So um, when we're gonna talk about the private API network, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, how it's gonna allow you to keep all of your APIs together in one place and organized. Um, we'll talk through how um, we can put an approval step to make sure that that um, network is something that is really just full of truly curated APIs and not just anything that anyone can put in there. Um, and something to bear in mind is that this is an enterprise only feature, but we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go through. Um, so I'll take over here. And okay, so as Ian kind of um, alluded to a little bit when uh, he was talking through and, and mentioned the, the API network, he said that a lot of you might be familiar with the public API network, which is what I'm looking at at the moment. Um, and we kind of know this as a place where, you know, any organization can come to publish their APIs, their Postman workspaces, their collections, and just refreshing ourselves on that context helps us really understand what the private API network might be, right? We're just changing that first word when we come to the API network here. We're just gonna choose the private one instead. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we're looking here, this is really just assets that exist within my Postman team only. It's nothing that is public or available more broadly. I've got to have a login. I've got to have been invited to this team um, to be able to see this network. But it gives me that same opportunity to create like a glossy catalog or marketplace, if you will, of the different APIs, workspaces, and things that I might want to promote within my organization. Um, and so you'll see that as I'm looking at the, the private API network here, if I just start to scroll, um, as we get into the list here, we'll see all sorts of different um, APIs um, within this list. Um, but we'll also see some other assets too. It's possible to add in workspaces and collections directly to this network as well. Um, but what we're looking at is really a consumer focused view. Like we're focusing on, okay, what is the, the name of the API, the description? We're not providing too much information here. We're trying to make this a resource that's very easy to browse um, and for people to find what they're looking for. Um, you know, we hear time and time again that locating an API within an organization can be particularly challenging. Um, so the private API network is really designed to try and solve for that use case. Um, back up at the top here, we can see that I've got a number of folders. Um, and so I can use these to help me organize. Uh, I can see all of my APIs and such down the left-hand side, but it might be that I really want to categorize those based on um, you know, area of business, um, how we divide up our teams, 
most organizations have some sort of logical categorization that they would like to reflect in a network like this. And so you can create folders that accurately um, represent that. And then it can make it a lot more, uh, a lot easier for people to, to come into the network and find these assets in the first place. Um, we can see that kind of in addition to, uh, in addition to that, we also have a search and a filter. Um, we can even look at, okay, well, who's, who's added what in here? Um, we can filter by the type of asset that's been added to the network. So whether it's an API or a collection or a workspace. Um, and again, all of this makes it a little bit easier for um, our API consumers to come in and really find what they're, what they're looking for. Um, so the network is something that I can access from this dropdown at the top here. But also if I go over to the home link here, um, you'll see that on the left hand side, just above the links that uh, Ian was using here for governance and security, there's also a private API network link here. So it's really easy to get to and navigate to. And it's something that, um, you know, with the, the kind of explosion in collaboration that you might be experiencing within your Postman team can really help you kind of consolidate and promote only the relevant things to API consumers. Um, Something that I see all the time is that when I come into the, the workspaces drop down list here, which I know a lot of us are really used to, to going in to find APIs and to work in Postman, you can actually end up with quite a long list of workspaces, the different projects, APIs, troubleshooting that people create these workspaces for, and it can make it quite hard to locate these assets. Um, so again, the private API network is really just a shortcut to arriving at that procured set of APIs within the organization. Um, I'm going to move into a, a workspace now just so we can talk about um, really what it means to get an API into the network in the first place. Um, and you know, Ian was working within the API builder here as well. And it's likely that when you have a workspace, you you start to end up with this set of APIs that you're working with. And some of them might still be something which shouldn't be visible to a consumer. You're still developing them. And in that case, it's great for them to just sit here and reside in the workspace only. But if we get to a point where we have one of these APIs that is you know, fully put together and is, is something that we do want to promote, we want to, to place it in the private uh, API network, You'll see that when I'm at the top level of the API here, over on the right-hand side under this published versions heading, there's an add to API network button. Um, and so if I come in and press on this, um, this allows me to just directly add it to the network. Um, if I want, I can choose a, a folder that I want this uh, API to exist in as well. Um, but otherwise, I can just go ahead and, and press add. And that's going to drop it straight into, into the network. Now, we have some controls that exist within Postman that can determine whether I should even be able to, to do this or not. So right now, I have the permission to just go and add this API to the network and, you know, job done. Uh, obviously, what we want to think about is the more and more people we have within our Postman team, People might think, yeah, I should add this API to the network. I think it's ready. Um, but as is so often in our kind of development life cycles, um, we really want a review stage. Is that API ready for the, for the rest of the organization? Does it have everything that it should contain? We want to review. And so um, within Postman team settings, which are up here on the, the top right-hand side, if I click on the manage team button, which again is also just under the, the same button, um, that will drop me into sort of the overall team level settings for Postman. Uh, and then all the way down at the very bottom on the left hand side here, there's a link called private API network. Uh, so if I click on that, um, there's just one setting in here um, and you'll see that it's a toggle and it's called element addition approval processes on and so when this is on 
unless I have a very specific role within Postman, which is the API network manager role, or I'm a super admin, um, I will require some kind of additional uh, approval in order to add something to the network. So if I just drop over to a different Postman account here very quickly, one that doesn't have this e elevated level of, of permission and go and take a look at that same API, what we'll see is that I won't actually be able to add it immediately to the network. Um, we'll see that there's an approval step in there that needs to happen instead. So I'll click on this example API again, and you'll see that even the button text is different. It says request to add to API network. Um, so if I do this again, I can select my desired location, I can add a comment, and then I can request to add this um, API. Um, and so if I jump back into the account I was just using that does have that um, added level of permission, and I go and take a look inside the private API network here. Uh, I'll see that I've got a one next to this pending request section. Um, so if I go ahead and click on that, um, I'll see that I've got this API here that I'm requesting to add, and there's a link so that I can go and view it in the workspace. So as someone who's determining this approval, I can go check it out in the workspace, see if it contains everything that I'm expecting it to. And then if it does, I can approve it. Or if I don't think it's ready, I could deny. In this case, we'll approve. Um, I have the chance to, to change exactly where it's going to, to sit. Um, but otherwise, I can just um, make that approval. Um, you'll see that I'll also get a notification to say that my API was allowed in. Um, and now my API sits within the network and it's ready for people to discover. Um, so a final point here is that, you know, we went through the, uh, the workspace to locate an API to add to the network. Down in the bottom left-hand corner here, there is also an add to network button. So this is another flow that you can go through if you click on this. This will allow you to search for collections, workspaces, and APIs locate them here and then either just add them directly or if you have that approval process on um, to, to submit the approval through here as well. Um, so that really wraps up the uh, the private API network and I'll hand it back to, to Ian to talk about roles and permissions. All right, super, thanks Matt. So a lot of what we've talked about today in the session so far is gonna require some amount of access control um, for who's allowed to access these different features within the, the system here. So um, Postman actually implements all of this as a role-based access control. And there are three main ways to get this access as I go through and, uh, uh, and demo this. So um, there are three real main ways to set this. The first one is gonna be at that team level where you can give people on your team generalized access. Like you can do everything regarding billing or you're an admin and you get all of its uh, access and so on. For some organizations, you're going to want more specific access control, um, and you can actually take that down to a workspace level. So, uh, for example, when I was doing my work a few minutes ago with governance, I was in a Postman team workspace. You can grant and revoke various kinds of access to particular workspaces. So even if somebody were marked as a developer who you recently hired, maybe you want to restrict them from accessing a particular workspace with maybe more sensitive information or something for now. Um, and finally, you can also give and revoke access to specific elements in the UI, such as being able to add a mock server or set up a monitor. Not every organization is gonna need such fine-tuned restrictions like this, but if you've got a fairly large organization or as your organization grows, you may wanna be more careful about who's allowed to have uh, edit access or maybe uh, restrict to just read-only access. Now, these roles and access restrictions are mostly available on the professional and enterprise plans. We do allow a small amount of access control on basic paid plans to allow you to mark workspaces as being private or public. Uh, most of what I'm gonna demo today is gonna apply to the professional and enterprise plans. Um, within the free plan and the basic plan, uh, you have the ability to uh, create a team on the free plan. You can create a team with, uh, I think, two other people. And you have the ability to mark one of those people as a community manager role, which allows 
you know, setting something as public uh, for sharing um, like a, an API or something like that uh, at a public level if everything else is marked as being private. So I'm going to have the moderators drop another link in chat about how these get set up so you can read more about the kinds of roles that you can assign, as well as the, uh, the type of account that you'll need in order to access this. Um, so I'm going to go back into Postman and show you where all of this gets set up and managed. So again, back on the home page of, of my Postman organization, we've got the private API network, governance and security and so on. Um, but what I'm going to be doing here, let's move my notes out of the way here. Um, is I'm gonna go in and manage the team. So up in the top right corner of the interface, next to my profile, I see this button called team. And if I you know, open this uh, sort of dialogue up, I see some statistics about our monitoring usage and custom domains and, and quotas and things like that. And there are different team settings, but what I'm gonna click on is this button here at the top that says manage team. So I click on that. And now I get to see uh, all the different settings and, and Matt went in and talked about some of these, for example, the private API network. Um, but I'm gonna click on the section here in a moment called roles and permissions. So inside the roles and permissions, this is just kind of a read only view of the different kinds of roles um, that you can have within an organization and what they have available uh, you know, as part of that role. So there's nothing that I can change. There's nothing that I can alter here, but I can show what kind of permissions they're going to get if I make somebody an admin. It's gonna unlock 55 different things within the application. Um, if I mark someone as a developer, there's a number of things that they can do. They can view monitors, they can create monitors, they can you know, go in and create uh, APIs and, and that sort of thing. And so this is just a kind of a high level view of what you have available as you set these roles. Um, now, if we look at the, uh, uh, the workspace roles, if we scroll down just a little bit inside the workspace roles, um, this is where we can mark somebody as an editor for a particular workspace um, or just a viewer where they get read-only access. So inside of here for the viewer, for example, they can view the integrations, they can use the collection runner, um, but they wouldn't be able to modify anything. Um, and it can even get granular down into like whether or not they can uh, use the debugger. Um, there are other controls on here, um, such as API roles, mock server roles, monitor roles. And if we scroll up, there's also collection roles. Um, that's within the workspace itself. And that's where you can look at a really granular level. Like even though I'm gonna give you uh, editor access to this workspace, um, I only want you to have read-only access to this part of the workspace. And so you can actually get in very specifically on a per user level. Uh, now you can also set up groups uh, within these roles as well, and you can assign these permissions to groups as well. So let's go back over to the team view again. I'm gonna go back to team. I'm gonna go back to manage team. And we're gonna take a look at how my account is set up here within, uh, within this. So I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit so that I can see my list name in the list here. And we can see it says developer plus one more. And there's also a garbage can where I can kick myself out of the team if I want, um, but I don't wanna do that. I like my job. So um, if I click on the developer plus one more, this is where I can see all the different flags. And again, these are at a team level. So these are the team level flags. I'm marked as an admin and I'm marked as a developer. Uh, now I can come in here because I'm an admin, I could allow myself to be that community manager, which is the, the restriction that uh, Matt just talked about uh, in order to publish an API on our uh, API network and so on, um, or the API network manager or the partner manager as well. We've also got some, uh, some really neat uh, partner controls um, if you wanna have internal and external partners um, within Postman as well. So as I set these flags, we see the update roles button down here would be enabled and then that would unlock additional functionality for my account. In this case, I'm gonna leave it off right now. Uh, I'm gonna let someone else modify my, uh, my access later on. Um, so from here, let's see. Uh, see, so yeah, I'm, not, I'm not, gonna, not gonna abuse my admin power and give myself any more, uh, any more access, um, but let's go into a little bit deeper control. So I'm gonna go back to my workspace so I'm gonna click on workspaces. I'm gonna to go to my intergalactic workspace and let's show you a little bit more about uh, what we can do inside of here. So 
Uh, this is the main overview page, and we can see near the top of the UI, we see a button called Workspace Settings. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on that Workspace Settings. And uh, on this page, this is where we see everybody who has access to this workspace and what level of access they have. And again, this is the workspace level role. Um, so in this case, I'm marked as an admin. I can come in here. I can set myself to only be an editor or only uh, a viewer, which is the read-only access. Um, but I can also see that all of our other members of Postman have read-only access to this workspace. So I can come in here, for example, and I can mark everybody as an editor. And now Matt, who is part of that team, would have the ability to come in and modify my workspace. And that takes effect right away. There's no save and, and verification on that. It just immediately makes that change. Um, we also have a visibility level. Now, when I created the workspace, I said that I wanted to make this a team-based workspace. Um, and this is why it's showing the entire team on here as well. Um, and then I can go in and I can give um, access to that. Now, if I were to come in here and search for Matt, it doesn't find Matt specifically, but Matt is part of that other team. So I could go in and I could invite Matt specifically where I can give Matt more specific um, access levels within my workspace if I wanted. So for example, if I made the whole Postman team read only on here, I could invite Matt and make Matt specifically an editor on this workspace. All right, so let's, uh, let's go over here and we're gonna look at more of the element level uh, settings in here as well. So for example, if I click on mock servers, um, I don't have any mock servers defined and so I can't really adjust the permissions on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a mock server really quickly. And yep, that looks fine. I'm gonna pick an existing collection. I'm just gonna call this mock server. Now that I have a mock server defined in here, if I hover over the mock server that I just created, we're going to notice the three dots here, which opens up a little submenu. And in that submenu, I can manage the roles for this specific mock server. So within the settings here, so when I click on manage roles, it's showing all of the people that have access to the workspace. In this case, it's just me. And I can set myself as an editor or a viewer. Now, it's important to note that there is a bit of a hierarchy in the flags of what's, uh, what's available. So because I'm an admin, if I mark myself as a viewer on this mock server, because I'm also an admin of the workspace, I still have access to go in and modify uh, you know, something about the mock server. So typically that editor role would allow you to say, rename the mock server uh, where the viewer would not be able to do things like that. But if I make myself a viewer, I could still go in and change the name of the mock server. I can delete the mock server completely because I'm also an admin and that role supersedes some of these more granular things. So it's important to understand the uh, sort of that hierarchy as well. And our documentation will go in and uh, explain some of that. Um, so for example, if I update that and make myself read only, again, I can still come in here and I can change this to mock server. Uh, two, for example, and it actually makes that change. And I can come in here, I can also delete that, which typically a viewer would not have permission to do, but because I'm an admin on here, I have full permission to do everything on that workspace. But if I were to go in and individually invite, say, Matt to this workspace, I could make Matt a, uh, an editor on everything, but have read-only access to, say, my monitors or my environment. Uh, because I don't want him to change those things. All right, so let's go back to the slides. Um, so just to recap, we talked a little bit about the team level access and how you can go in and set kind of these wide scoping permissions about um, the access that you have within the team. And then um, at a workspace level, you can go in and you can make someone an admin or, uh, or sorry, uh, an editor or a viewer at a workspace level. And then also on a, on a per element basis, um, you can go in for the collections. Uh, actually, let me demo that real quick. So uh, collections, APIs, environments, mock servers, and monitors, these all have individual um, access control that you can go in and set. So for example, on the collection, I can come in here and I can also find manage roles. And that's going to manage the roles specifically to that one collection. 
Um, the one thing that we don't have access control over right now is flows. So if you come in here and you create a flow, there's no, uh, there's no role assignment for the, uh, the flows right now. All right, so I'm gonna turn it back over to Matt one more time, and uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about audit logs inside of Postman. Perfect, thanks Ian. Um, so yeah, uh, with, with the audit logs, um there's something that will track uh very like high level actions that happen within postman so let me just take over here cool so we're, we're back looking at postman and um we'll see that from the home page if i want to go and hit these audit logs um again if i come up to this team button in the, the top right here where I typically get at all of my settings. Um, if I click on that, um, down towards the bottom, there's a link for audit logs. Uh, and so if I if I click on that, um, this will navigate me over to a place where I can see everything that's that's happening within within my Postman team. Um, kind of at a uh, a pretty high level. So some of the changes that, that Ian was just talking about in terms of, okay, I'm gonna make someone a viewer or an editor of a mock server. Those are um, really kind of much more granular changes that are not tracked within the audit logs. The audit logs are really designed to um, catch things that might be more of like a security or compliance concern. Um, with you know actions that are taken within your postman team so as we're looking at the the list here you know we can see things like um user roles being updated so when ian was looking at like the admin role and the developer role and the community manager role those are the most significant um role changes you can make because they're team level roles so we do highlight those within the audit log because they provide such a varying level of permission across everything that can happen in postman um, and so we can see here that even this morning um, i was coming in and changing roles for for different people um, and it tracks who did what when did they do it even what ip address did they do it from um, and really in a, a very similar way to when i was talking about the private api network uh, we have a filter here at the top um, so we can go back and we can look at okay well what about the last 180 days uh, if you're on an enterprise team if you're working with a professional this will will cap out at 90 um, and then we can you know pick a very specific action that we might be be looking for in here right so um, if we have a suspicion or we want to understand when the last uh the last time a certain action happened i can come in and pick that out and then i can apply and it might be that i don't find any actions under a specific uh type or it might be that you know i actually get a, a set of results depending on what i'm looking for um, and of course i can can also come in here and, and narrow this down by by user as well um, so this is really helpful for, for being able to, to track exactly what has, has happened. Um, and, you know, often we want to, to take things a little bit further than just being able to, to look at it within the Postman interface. So you'll see up in the, the top right corner here, there's actually a button that um, enables you to export these logs, which will provide a CSV. And this gets sent over email. Um, so I actually did a quick export earlier and I, I pulled this up um, on my machine here, already downloaded the file. And this gives you exactly the, the same information, but it's it's now on a file on your system uh, in a CSV format. And so depending on what your tooling preferences are, if you wanted to pull this into Excel and start to apply your own filters, sorting, um, you can really do whatever you want there and obviously csv um, means you can do some sort of programmatic manipulation as well um, and really as i'm talking about programmatic um, manipulation and working with these logs something else to bear in mind and um, i'll have the the moderation team drop a, a link to 
um, our Postman public workspace where a collection for the Postman API exists. Uh, this Postman API collection, which you can fork from our public workspace, you'll see has an audit logs folder. Um, and if you come into that uh, and you've got all of your authorization set up and you run this request, um, you'll see that you can pull these logs over API as well. And so we can see exactly the same set of logs. This time, instead of JSON or it being displayed within a pretty UI, um, we have it in a, in a JSON response here. Um, and this is kind of cool, right? Like you could go away and write script that hits this endpoint and does whatever you want with these logs. We see a lot of uh, enterprise organizations digesting these logs and feeding them into other systems for analysis. Um, but you could also, you know, extract just this request, set it up inside your own Postman collection, start writing test scripts against this. So there's a lot of ways to really get at this data and be able to do what you want with it, um, which hopefully makes this information as, as useful as possible, right? Um, there's nothing kind of more annoying than having logs that are really stuck on a page and you can't can't work or filter with them in a way that you really want to to operate on them. So, um, yeah, to to really summarize on uh, the audit logs, it's that um, that top level ability to look at who did what, when did they do it, the most important actions that can happen in a Postman team that can affect. Um, you know, security and compliance with your organization. Um, and then there's a couple of really great ways to get at that data, either exporting through the CSV or running through uh, the Postman API to, to retrieve the results like we just looked at. So, um, and again, as I alluded to, uh, this is something that is part of the, the professional and enterprise plans. Um, so if you're on a team that has that capability and you're a, an admin or a super admin, you should be able to locate that page and have a play around and see what it looks like. Cool. Ian, you are on mute, but I will pass it back to you so you can. Yeah, thanks, Matt. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to recap uh, what we went over today. So we learned about building out governance rules and spectral. Uh, we dropped some documentation links for that as well. Um, Matt showed a demo of how to do work with the private API network and how to organize those things. I love that those are organized into folders. That's probably my favorite part of it. And then we talked a little bit about the granular control that we need uh, to go in and actually set access levels on different things within your team. So you can be very specific about who can launch things, who can edit things and so on. And then Matt gave a great overview of those audit logs as well and how to export them. That export shows up over email to a link. Uh, it doesn't email you the file directly. It emails you a link to download that file, but also showed how you can access that using the Postman API as well. So definitely go check out those documentations and uh, check out the workspace that Matt shared as well. Um, all right. Um, so as far as additional resources go, um, we've got these links as well. If the moderators could drop some of these uh, as well, that would be, that would be great. Um, we have a lot more intergalactics uh, coming up. So we try to do these sessions once a month. Um, and so um, we encourage you to register for those. They're free. Um, and uh, we do make the recording available afterwards. And we do put all of these up on YouTube. You can check out our YouTube channel as well. And then um, if you want to get into even more of, of what's possible inside of Postman, uh, we do have the 30 days of Postman for developers. Uh, Joyce recently also launched a 15 days of Postman for testers. So if you're interested in getting into software testing, we have that available. And then, of course, our community forums are full of folks who are happy to help out if you have additional questions, as well as the Postman answers link as well. We have a lot of information on there for frequently asked questions. Um, we do have this link, and I'll ask the moderators to drop this in, uh, in chat as well. So we're going to uh, take a couple of minutes to go over some questions that were asked um, that uh, we'll go in and we'll explain a little bit more information. Um, but we, we would ask that uh, please take a moment to fill out this, uh, this survey for us. Again, these surveys are, are very beneficial for us for how we conduct the intergalactic sessions, what kinds of topics you'd like to hear about, and so on. So please use that form. And, uh, and let us know. This link is going to be on the next slide here as well, um, as well as in chat. So we're going to go into Q&A. Uh, we had a couple of questions kind of left over from the session. 
Um, and so I'm going to grab this first one from Corey uh, that basically asked our defining roles still license based. So uh, yes, uh, most of what we went through today is going to be on a paid plan, uh, basic, uh, professional or enterprise. Some of these features are available on the free plan. So when it comes to uh, very, like the very fine tuned controls uh, of, the, of the access controls, um, some of those will not be available on the free plan. But on the free plan, for example, um, if you set up a small team with a couple of colleagues, you can go in, you can say, okay, we're going to make the, all of this work private. We're going to make a private workspace, but Matt is going to have access to make this stuff public later on, for example. Um, and so you do have the ability to set the uh, community manager flag on the free account. On the basic account, it starts to expand out from there. Professional does even more. Enterprise does even more from there. So yeah, you can check out our documentation page and that should uh, let you know which of those access controls are controlled uh, by which license. Um, the other question that we had from here was asking, is there any possibility to get a temporary license and discover all of this functionality? Um, that's a fantastic question. Since most of what we covered today does require a paid license, uh, there is a free trial for the basic plan. Um, but if you do want to try out the enterprise features, you'll need to reach out to our sales team um, and you can contact them at an email address. I think it's sales at postman.com. You can reach out to them and ask for a demonstration of that. Um, the documentation will give you a pretty good uh, you know, explanation of how these things are going to work. But I understand as well, it's nice to get in and, and kind of tinker with that yourself. Um, but that would be a demo that, uh, that you'd need to get from our sales team. Cool. So that was all the questions that we had. We appreciate everybody's time today. We'll get this recording uh, sent out in the next day or so from Zoom, uh, but we'll also be putting the video up on YouTube as well. We'll be adding chapter notes and all the, all the links that uh, our moderators shared in chat. We'll make sure all of those are in the YouTube description. Matt, thank you again for your time today. We appreciate uh, taking some of Matt's time uh, from, the, uh, from the solutions team to help out. So thank you, Matt. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun and I uh, really loved going through it all. All right. Um, so yeah, please uh, please do register for the next intergalactic session that's going to be happening in uh, less than a month, and uh, we'll see everybody at the next one. Have a great day, everyone. Cheers. Bye.